sounds like a pair of castanets that would be in the background of a Harry Belafonte song. Shake, 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 senora, la, 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 la. Yeah, it's junk. What's up, people? So today, I thought I would talk about what does Casey Putch, Mr. Fancy Pants, do for fun? Dirt bike! <laughs> yes! So I never got to get one of these when I was younger, uh, which I have a feeling a lot of you were never allowed to get a dirt bike. So we're gonna have fun today because you should totally get a dirt bike. And this video series is going to be why, but how to be into dirt bikes and not do something stupid or not have a good time. If you don't do it right, you're not gonna have a good time. So we're gonna have a good time. I bought a used, of course, because who wants to lose money to new stuff? First thing, get a used one. Just let somebody else lose money. But if you really, really, really want to get a shiny thing, go get a new one if you can. I mean, that'd be fun, but you're just going to get it dirty anyway. So it's food for thought, food for thought. Facebook Marketplace is great. So I found a 2005 Honda CRF <laughs> 230F. I think that's too many Fs, but I guess Honda didn't give an F, or did they? But anyway, 230 cc's, four stroke. Personally, I like four stroke engines. I think two stroke engines are obnoxious and the smell is obnoxious. But I know a lot of you think two stroke engines are awesome and sound great. So it's a matter of personal taste on that. But if you get into the nature of the power curve, four stroke engines, a lot of good tractable torque down low. So even for a newer rider and whatnot, they're pretty easy to ride in the sense of that. And nowadays they're making really good power for the classes and such so you can have a lot of fun. Now, okay, I get a bunch of you people out there are super kick-ass motocross people and dirt bike riders. So why don't you add something positive to the comments that would help out a lot of other young people? I am not a super dirt bike person. I am a road race car kind of person. Okay, but we're gonna have fun and I hope this is still valuable anyway, so we'll all be able to help younger people together or older people like me who think they're younger. So anyway, I got this thing for $1,600, not a bad price. Uh, it hasn't been totally trashed. I mean, obviously it's been ridden, it's a bit dirty. You can see the wear, you know, where boots are shifting and such, but it's not all bent up, uh, nothing broken looking with the engine. It started and idled perfectly. Uh, has brand new tires, which are pretty decent. You know, everything worked well. The plastic looks great, seats good. Uh, and it was generally really good. So I was, I was happy with that price. I think new these things are over four grand, something like that. Uh, and you're basically getting the same bike. Uh, naturally, for that amount of money, if you're gonna buy a dirt bike, it's, it's a matter of time. What is your time worth versus what is your money worth? And dirt bikes, in a matter of speaking, are not hugely valuable items. We're not talking a Ferrari here, guys. We're talking a dirt bike. So if you buy something for $1,000 that takes you 30 hours and $300 to fix up to be something that's worth $1,600, you might've been better off buying a $1,600 bike and be further ahead. Does that make sense? Because your time is valuable in life. You wanna be out riding and having fun or working or picking up your significant other and getting a life, right? So ladies, you should thank me. And I know this channel is 99% dudes, so don't give me any crap. So beyond that, uh, battery was good, starts right up, idles nice. Let's see here. Hopefully it's actually in neutral, right? So that's pretty cool. I mean, the bike is dead cold. I haven't started in quite some time and uh, no problems at all. When you go to buy a dirt bike, um, especially if it's four stroke, obviously, you don't want it to make an undue amount of mechanical noises. You're gonna hear a little bit, but if you hear any nasty clattering, it's too much, it might be totally ragged out. Also see if there's oil smoke. Obviously we're talking a four stroke engine should not be burning oil like a two stroke engine. If it's two stroke, that's literally what they do. Uh, and also the gearbox is important. Make sure that uh, it shifts through all the gears well. You can be full throttle on and off each gear and it doesn't pop out or do anything weird uh, because you know people have the ability to crash these things and absolutely bust on the, uh, the shifting mechanisms and stuff. So things can go wrong there. Uh, look to see if your wheels, your spokes and stuff are reasonably true and decent. Check your plastic. And the general condition of the bike in general is gonna tell you a lot about its past. Also the owners, the person whom you're speaking with, will be able to tell you more about its life and how they think about it. So these are all factors to take in consideration. Generally with a dirt bike, if it looks good, it probably is pretty good. 
Uh, and then you can, of course, go ride it and uh, negotiate your price down and whatnot. So on this bike, I wanted to fix it up a little bit, get it even better uh, to ride it so I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to over detail and clean it up because I am going to get it dirtier. But so I started initially, of course, you got to change the oil. That's really smart. That's always your best investment for your engine. Battery seems real good. Not going to worry about that. Tires are real good. Not going to worry about that other than having a good amount of pressure. However, I want to show you the old chain. Or you should listen to the old chain. I mean, this sounds like a pair of castanets that would be in the background of a Harry Belafonte song. Shake, 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 senora. La, 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 la. Yeah, it's junk. This chain is junk. I have never seen a chain so junk. I mean, listen to that. So that had to go. And um, I, could have, I could have lubed this with something, but the fact that it is this loose and ragged out, it's been run dry for a long time. So getting a chain is an intelligent thing to do. You won't be having extra wear to your sprockets. Um, and the last thing you want to do is go on a trip somewhere to go trail riding or motocross track or something, bust a chain. Next thing you know, something funky happens. You're over the handlebars. You got a chain flying off, smacking your buddy in the face. You're not going to have a good time. So don't do that. So got a new one on there. Just got it at my local, uh, mo you know, motorcycle store. Nice little place here in Bowling Green. Got, I like to support local businesses. You know what I mean? Because if we don't support local businesses, you lose all the charm and healthfulness of their people and your community. And I dig big, big, big stores like Iron Pony is amazing in uh, Columbus. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, by the way. But I like to support little places, so that's what I did. Got a helmet from there, proper motocross helmet, some good goggles. Uh, I'm just going to trail ride for now, so I'm going to wear my road racing motorcycle boots. You guys are going to be like, you need motocross boots. Nah, screw it. I'll wear my uh, road racing ones. They're pretty good. They're better than tennis shoes. But keep in mind, I am old. I don't want to fall down. I've road raced motorcycles, you know, so I have a healthy respect for my own life as well as other people's lives and property, which it's something I want to bring up to young people. So any teenagers and young people in their 20s watching this. You know, I grew up largely out in the country, okay? Small town, and lots of people are into dirt bikes and four-wheelers and stuff. And uh, it's frontier land. We don't, you know, nobody cared about, you know, street laws. People drive their dirt bikes and go-karts and four-wheelers down the country roads, do whatever they want, rip across fields, stuff like that. And, you know, if you're not hurting anybody, that's cool, do your thing. You know, you might get in trouble, whatever but uh, maybe not the best idea in the world. But the thing of it is with a dirt bike and a four-wheeler and race cars in general, it gives everybody this great feeling of power and excitement, which is fun. That's, that's the fun of motorsports, right? But for you young people, especially on your dirt bike, if you can go ripping around the countryside and properties and stuff, uh, one, you can hurt yourself. Let's just be honest, you know, if a farmer strings up a cable across a road or something, you're not paying attention, like poor people in snowmobiles are doing 60 miles an hour and hit a cable and <laughs> that's it. Um, things like that can bite you. So, you know, ride smart, pay attention where you're at, you know, maybe don't ride in unfamiliar terrain real fast uh, or don't ride without surveying the area first. But the other thing, honestly, you guys, is if we all are going to enjoy things like, li you know, personal liberties like dirt bikes and motorcycles and cars and things like this for the future, we as those individuals who own them and enjoy them need to be responsible. So truth be told, a dirt bike can destroy a lot of property. So if you're going out and turfing people's yards or you think it's freaking hilarious to tear up a, a green on a golf course or something, um, yeah, that might be funny to you, man, but that can also be a felony real quick and you're making everybody look bad. So don't do that because I'd like to see you have a good future. And if at the very least you never get in trouble for it, but everybody in your community knows that and they don't like you in the future, that might be a problem. You're not going to have a good time. Okay. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have a lot of fun riding at responsibility and uh, going from there. Now a dirt bike, of course, you can get hurt. It goes without saying it's a dirt bike. It's made to do cool things off road. So pay attention you know, work up to things. If you're going to be jumping and wheeling and stunning, totally cool, but work up to it and, you know, ride within your talent level. Even if you have a hold my beer, watch this moment, are you guys silly? I'm still going to send it. Um, you know, ride within your talent level. Don't get hurt because you're not Larry Enticer. Okay. So that's kind of where my lesson is going for today. But what I'm doing is so I'm putting stuff on here. One, change the just doing the basic maintenance stuff. In the next video, we're gonna go out on the trail with a buddy of mine, Andrew, <laughs> who's had never had a dirt bike. So that's kind of fun. 
I'm gonna mess with him. Or maybe I shouldn't, maybe he'll mess with me. But we're gonna put it on YouTube. So I wanted to change the brakes, changing the chain, changing oil, making sure everything is working well and being safe. Um, the best way to have performance in any motorsports uh, machine is for it to operate the way it's supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is uh, fit as a fiddle. It's got good brakes, tires, you know, runs well, things like that. So these are the old brakes and actually they're not bad. They got plenty of life left to them. There's some Nissans. Uh, but I thought, you know what the heck, let's just start fresh. Got myself some brand new ones. Already got them on here. We're just talking a couple of, I think they were 12 millimeter bolts here. Caliper came right off. In fact, I'm pretty sure you don't even have to take the caliper off. There's a little plug here. You can take out with a flathead screwdriver and they got an Allen wrench, a little pin, and the pads will slide right out the back. Of course, you're gonna have to push the hydraulic pistons back. And then always, whether it's car, motorcycle, anything, make sure you bleed your brake again before you go ride. You don't wanna go replacing your brake pads and then go hitting the road or trail and go whoosh, and having no brakes. <laughs> that is no fun, but I think that's happened to a lot of us. So remember, if you're changing your pads, you got to make sure your stuff is good before you go out again. Uh, the other thing, and quite frankly, I'm just doing this because it looks cool and I was a kid of the 80s and I thought that was neat. I got some um, brush guards here for the aluminum guards that, uh, and uh, I kind of just picked them out, but they fit great. Got them down in Iron Pony. So I got it, but unfortunately these bars were not made uh, for these um, brush guards. So I've got to drill and then tap out each one of these holes for a machine screw, which, you know, it's kind of fun, whatever. I got a little bit of time right now and it's enjoyable to take pride in your workmanship. And when you put your workmanship and time and labor into a machine that you own, then you get to enjoy it more and it means more to you. So I think that's a great lesson for any older people watching with their young people, that if you get them a project, whether it's a fixer upper, you know, like this, or it's something to restore, then they're gonna have more pride in it. So I've, I'm a big advocate of if young people want something, whether it's a go-kart or a dirt bike, uh, don't get them a brand new one. Don't, that's too nice. You know, it's gonna work too well and right off the bat without them having to, you know, do anything with it. Get them something that's a little bit of a fixer-upper. Maybe it runs okay, so you don't have this giant project that they'll get bored of and never get a ride, but let them take pride in it. Let them appreciate what it takes to have something nice, keep something nice, make it nice. And also with little things they're gonna fix up, put in their elbow grease and intelligence, they're gonna learn a lot and they're gonna have more respect for themselves. They're, they're gonna gain confidence and um, they're gonna respect their machine a lot more too. And I think those are just really important lessons uh, across the board for young people. So big advocate of that sort of thing. All right, I have no idea what size Allen wrench this is. I'm guessing it's metric. Whole world's metric, that's crazy. What happened? And why is the United States still on American standard? Oh, it's not even metric, it's Phillips. That's how intelligent I am today. All right, I can, I can get a screwdriver. Give me a screwdriver. Give me your secrets. Okay, I got one. So this is literally just a machine screw with a uh, flat washer into aluminum. I probably ought to thread lock it but it eh, potentially will work. This is what they gave me in the kit. So, you know, I'm hoping the slight elasticity of the plastic will effectively work as a split washer or a lock washer. Gosh, where are all the darn tools? Silly Genius Garage students have usurped my tools. I gotta go find one. Dun, 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 boom. You guys, yep, they put my tools in the wrong thing. These aren't genius garages, they're mine. Oh well, I guess it, it's not one and the same. But, okay, so I got tools, hooray. So I think the elasticity of the plastic will work as a um, lock washer a bit. And if it doesn't, I got my Swiss Army knife, I'll fix it on the trail or I'll take them off on the trail and then I'll lock tight them later. But I don't really want to lock tight them now, thread lock, thread locking uh, goo because if it doesn't, you know, like, if I, ever have, if I break these things and then I gotta fix them, oh, that's not gonna be any fun. All right, doing a YouTube channel while drilling. Oh, and I should probably be a good role model and put on some uh, safety glasses. How about that? Casey trying to be a role model. Oh my gosh, riding a dirt bike. You're old. Yeah, I, I'm old, but I know things. I'm not gonna be all cocky about it. Frankly, my students teach me a lot of stuff. They really do. And they tell me when I'm full of crap. And I respect them for that. Sometimes 
they're right. That's all about teamwork. So everybody learns together. You ever got teachers or uh, superiors that um, they, uh, even if somebody tells them they're wrong and points out how something's right and does not the most polite way to ever, they couldn't possibly say thank you, I'm sorry, or you're right, or grow. I don't like those kind of people. Those aren't very good leaders. So I'm not gonna be one. And if you think, just because somebody young can teach me something, or I might make a mistake, that I'm lesser of a person or a leader for it, wow, you, uh, tell you what, man, you are going to be disappointed in life, because everybody's human. Do I sound like Bob Ross right now? Bob Ross, the painter guy. I like Bob Ross. He was nice to squirrels. Okay. Casey, do you know anything about actually tapping something? You look like a monkey doing something inappropriate to a football. Way to go. Okay, I'm almost there. Don't want to break my tap. You guys are watching. Really helpful if I had some tap lube. Well, I don't have tap lube, but I got DW30. Oh, do you need? That's not what it's called, Casey. It's WD40. I know, I was trying to be funny. That's how you deal with the stress of life. Okay, so that's the other thing I'd noticed. So I just made that up. I'm like DW30 instead of WD40, right? Have you ever noticed that old people like to make up words and you, you swear they get things wrong on purpose? Well, they do because they think it's funny because that's their way of dealing with the stress of life, okay? That's what humor is for. That's why the world that doesn't allow people to make jokes uh, doesn't get life. <laughs> that's how we get through life, humor. That's how we manage stress. So we can have fun with that. I can't remember why I brought that up. Proves I'm old. Hard drive's full, allegedly. It's starting to glitch. I need to upgrade. I'm not gonna upgrade. I like being human, that's cool. Okay, I need some more hardware. Okay, so here it is, flat washers. And there's the Phillips head that I brilliantly thought for a second was an Allen head. Eh, it might be. It might be blurry. So another thing, you guys, you can see today I'm wearing my shirt that says Tamiya Hornet. I don't know, rail control, off-road, something like that. I'm having fun with it. So dirt bike like this, and that's it. Every kid wants a dirt bike, and you know what? They should, they're awesome. Every adult should have a dirt bike. Just to go ripping around off-road and sailing through the country, it's almost as good as a horse. Yeah, I like horses better, because I like animals. Same kind of thing, right? Just be respectful on your dirt bike. Anyway, so we're talking about projects for young people to do with older people and respect their machinery and have some pride in it. And then those young people can save up their money doing chores or jobs and whatnot to get something. So it's just great lessons all around. But when you're a kid, maybe you're too young for a go-kart or dirt bike or can't quite afford that, radio controls and slot cars fill that need as well. And I have actually seen a young man some years ago get an amazing scholarship into aerospace engineering because of the extensive work he did with radio control airplanes and building and designing them. So think about that, guys. Stuff like this actually matters to young people's lives. So for any adults out there who don't see the value of a young person getting involved with their own machinery, as long as they're doing it in a respectful way and they're not like bleeding money or doing stupid things, it's a good thing. You gotta get hands-on to build stuff in the future. Maybe they'll come up with an invention and have a great business one day and help you when you're retired and old <laughs> and need help. But um, so I'm, I'm kinda rocking my old school shirt with a radio control car I wanted real bad when I was a little kid. Um, I always thought it was cool and inspirational. So got that on, I'm gonna do the other one here in a little bit. Don't wanna bore you guys too much. Got a bash guard. But uh, I hope this is a fun little opener just uh, getting going on this dirt bike. And uh, the next one, we're gonna take it out to a trail and you guys can see how old I am because I'm not an off-road rider. I'm an on-road driver kind of guy and I ride motorcycles on-road. So it could be hilarious or I could be okay. Truth be told, I have ridden this one time already off-road. It was primarily like grass and metal. It was nothing insane uh, at a uh, cop buddy of mine's uh, uh, property. He has some nice property out there. It was a lot of fun. So when we go out next, it will be my second time ever <laughs> driving, uh, riding a dirt bike. So um, I hope I entertain you to no end with the absurdity of it. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And I uh, hope to see you guys then as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.